Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord Modded. I uh, just made a mistake. Oh yes, I just made a mistake before I started recording this episode. I was actually wanting to start the episode with a tournament in one of the new towns because I was very curious as to see what kind of equipment we would be provided with in that uh, in that aspect. And you can see here that a lot of these new units, I've been recruiting quite a bit of them, and I'm, well, still just as curious to see exactly what they're going to give us and what they're going to turn out like. Anyway, I'm going to sell a bunch of desert horses here. We're going to sell a bunch of uh, sumter horses too, as I do have a quest to uh, uh, take desert horses to this guy. And uh, I kind of want to take only five because otherwise he's going to take the full amount and the problem with that is that I am now going to move very very slowly so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this quest and then I'm going to go to Askar and then I will buy some more horses for a hopefully relatively cheap price and then we'll move on from there and see what we can do as you can see my trade skill has thankfully now increased to 151 that has obviously been increasing over the time that I've just been running around off screen and uh yeah here we go okay oh they've, they've actually got desert horses for a very cheap price right here i'm actually kind of surprised okay so diul the dire is who i need to speak to hello there five desert horses all i have now there you go okay fantastic and now we can buy desert horses for a very very cheap price in fact although i'm now spending a massive amount of cash do i really want to spend that amount no I'm only going to buy a couple. There we go. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So Caravan Ambush. We're obviously going to do this. This is just fantastic. I mean, how can I say no to a Caravan Ambush, right? Usually these are pretty lucrative for me. And we should probably take a look at our trade skill perk before we do that. Your workshop productions are increased by 25%. Or increased tariff income by 10%. And wage decreased by 50% while waiting in settlements okay well uh there's i think this one is the only thing that is actually that good because the other thing is not even implemented the secondary benefit of that particular perk so it makes no sense for me to do anything there and let me just take a quick look and see if there's any people that i want to recruit there is not so i'm just going to move away from the caravan make sure that the ambushes know that these fellows are completely undefended mm -hmm. yes i'm not going to be defending them at all are they going to attack yes indeed there we go there are the desert bandits in question let's do this hopefully we're going to be fighting in the dunes yeah well i guess that's kind of close enough i mean it is kind of sandy but i i really wanted to fight in the dunes because it is very picturesque to see the the patterns in the sand and all that stuff. I think that's really, really fun. And, um, you know, pretty cool to fight in. And uh, is this... Yeah, this is actually a slashing weapon. Look at how slow it is. How much damage is this actually going to do if I use it as a slashing weapon? <laughs> okay. Hello there. 240 damage. This is probably one of the slowest pole arms I have ever used in my life, but that damage is hilarious okay yeah let's not let's not use it as that too much i might get addicted to um you know slashing with it okay let's just do a nice little um nice little thrust here and there uh this guy could definitely use a thrust Ah, oh, never mind okay apparently not apparently he says no Ooh, but his horse says yes, apparently. Okay, that sounded a bit weird. Let's not let's not go there. Mm. Let us not go there. Okay, let us indeed, instead, get a whole bunch of relation with the merchant or artisan or whoever this may be. And we're going to get some renown as well, of course. And we can, of course, take those prisoners. Okay, thank you. Glad we caught up to you in time. You're going to give me much more. Oh, yeah, give me all that. Thank you. And we got some more quests here. I'm hopeful that there might be a... Oh, you can help. Oh, okay. You need help with bandits? Sure, I can definitely do that. But I was hopeful that he might have a um, manual laborer quest or something like that. That would be the most advantageous for us at this point. 
I would very much like that. So um, we've got some more Manhunters. I guess we could just do an auto resolve against these guys, but they cannot be used for the manual laborer quest because they are new units that have been added through the use of Calradia Expanded, of course. So we're going to have to just use these guys instead. Use the looters if we can get a couple of them to join me. And we'll just take all the loot. Thank you. And what about these guys, actually? What are these guys? Oh, oh, I actually completed it? Oh, okay. Apparently I completed it just by being near to another one of those, um, another one of those groups. And we were able to get a number of them in the same fight. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's decent enough, I guess. Anyway, uh, let's just take a couple of these. They're pretty cheap, so I might as well. You never know when I'm going to come across... A, uh, another quest that requires those and training troops no not a big fan of that but I wouldn't mind recruiting some people thank you oh yes some of these places are noble uh, noble suppliers of units which is really quite fantastic this guy requires tools not entirely sure whether I should even bother to be honest giving this guy tools or not or whether I should just continue to take tasks in these places because this guy's a merchant and look at this he needs a, uh, a person to help him with the poachers and I'm actually thinking I have 12,000 right now let's let's actually go into the smithy real quick because we do have a person with 62 smithing skill as you can see right here so let's actually see what we can do with that okay so I have no charcoal to speak of whatsoever but thankfully this guy actually has the ability to create three charcoal out of two hardwood so let's actually just increase that a little bit right there and then what we're going to do, we have 18 charcoal. That's pretty nice. Now we're just going to destroy a couple of these things, smelt them down in such a way so that we can gain some wonderful resources. There we go, there we go, there we go. And I'm just making sure to smelt a couple down that actually do provide us with some wood. Because then we can also do that. There we go. Alright, that is looking pretty nice. Now we can just get a couple more of these. And I should, theoretically, now have the ability to create javelins. I know someone actually mentioned a couple of episodes ago that um, you're raking in money by making javelins. Yes, I, I do know about that. But generally, I think a lot of people know about it and now it is maybe frowned upon a little bit. I mean, obviously, if you want to do it, then by all means, it's your game. You can decide whatever you want to do. However, it is a little bit imbalanced in that aspect because, for example, if I just go to the javelins now and let me just see here, I'll just select this. And, oh, I actually do not have a... I do not have a shaft, unfortunately. I do not have a shaft that I can actually use. So I might have to go to the thrown weapons here and buy some simple javelins and hopefully that's going to give me what I need once I smelt them down so let me see yes indeed look at that there we go okay I actually did unlock something hopefully that is going to be what I require so let's just have a look see yep there we go okay so now we have a pine javelin shaft that's fantastic and this is going to be perfectly fine let's just increase the size because that increases the cost of the thing, apparently. And we're going to be calling it money. There we go. Fantastic. And look at that. I gained 31 skill points. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm talking about. It's absolutely insane the amount of skill that you can get by just doing that. And now, if I go here, look at that. 3,700. It's obviously not amazing, but just think about what I've just traded. I've just traded the one of the most basic, you know, one of the most basic metal resources and one hardwood and one charcoal for 3,700. So I could theoretically just sell all this now and then that's that. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sell two of them. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. That is literally the extent of how much I'm going to sell in terms of javelins in this playthrough. Because I feel like it is very strong. Uh, maybe a bit too strong. But I think, you know, as I say, it is completely up to the person playing whether they want to use uh, that particular strategy to earn money. Because to some people, earning money is kind of annoying. 
And I wholeheartedly understand that. It's just for a series. It's not something that I'm going to do that often. Unfortunately, this guy is a smith, so I actually don't want to make him into a caravan person. But he does have some pretty decent trade skill as far as I'm aware. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speak to this guy. And we're going to form a caravan. And we're going to make him do that. And then we're going to be raking in the trade skill, or at least I can hope that we will. And now we have to deal with the poachers. So let's go over there and deal with those guys. And I've now gained a level. Oh yes, I have now gained a level. That's fantastic. Okay, so yeah, this guy needs help with brigands as well. That's actually hilarious. Let's um, let's actually take this quest. Four bands of brigands. That's actually quite significant, considering. Anyway, we're gaining some decent cash right here. Um, I need to wait in the village, don't I? So if there are any, yeah, like for example this, if there are any brigand parties nearby, hello there. Let's just do some damage to these fellows. And I, I'll rescue the peasants, take the prisoners whenever I can. Take all the loot. you got to make sure you take all the loot, of course. And then we'll just defeat these guys as well. There we have it. Okay, and that is it. That is That is the quest done, I believe. Isn't it? Maybe? No, almost. And I mm, I wasn't in the town when, uh, I wasn't in the village, should I say, when the poachers actually turned up. So that was not particularly good. Hopefully we don't have a limited amount of time. No, 19 days. Okay, that is actually perfectly fine then. No problem at all there. And we have leveled up, as I say. So let's actually just take a quick look here. Okay, efficient charcoal maker. We're probably going to be taking the charcoal maker one. And what is this? Uh, no, yeah, we'll take the steel maker. That seems to be the best, in my opinion. And I should probably also spec a little bit into, into smithing, shouldn't I? Kind of makes sense, right? Kind of makes sense? Yeah, kind of makes sense. So let's go for another point in that. And then we'll go for one more point in social. And then I'll probably leave it at nine for the moment. And now we're just going to wait here for some time until midnight. And then we will hopefully be able to deal with the poachers. I am going to attempt a little bit of negotiation. So let's have a look. Maybe we can come to an agreement. And I'm going to try the 38%. Boom. And meaningful favors. Look at meaningful favors coming into its own right there. Boom. That has made all the difference. And now I'm done. Look at that. Now I'm done. That was super, super fast. And I was able to gain massive amounts of relation with this guy. And now there is a tournament going on in this town, which is absolutely perfect. Because I did want to, as I said before, do a tournament in this area. Because I was very curious as to what kind of units we're going to be facing. What kind of weapons we're going to be given and so on. And um, I'm not entirely sure if it's going to be the same as the Azurai. But I can only hope that it might not be. We'll see. And we're actually gaining the exact pole arm that I'm using right now, which is hilarious. Uh, of course. Oh, we're given a sword. This is nice. Oh, I like this. Oh, I don't like this so much, though. These guys are both trying to kill me. Okay, yeah, yeah. You can go over there. Thank you very much. Okay, let's try and deal some damage to this fellow from behind. Oh, hello. Try and deal some damage to this fellow from behind, I was going to say. He bopped him. He bopped him on the head. This peasant. This peasant showed that guy what for. Oh yeah, he was being disrespected for the last time. That is for sure right there. He really knew what was up. Okay, yeah. Uh, now we have an Imperial Crossbowman on my side. I, I gotta say, I really enjoy the tournaments where they actually give me something that is fun to use. Because obviously, spears, I don't really get along with that much. This guy is crazy. Oh, thank you. Thank you for lowering your guard right at the last second right there, sir. Okay, uh, red team. Oh, no, no. Did you really eliminate me at the end right there? Oh, he got me. He got me super, super badly. Let's skip the current match. Yeah, I'm not going to be in this, unfortunately. Oh, well. Never mind. Never mind. I don't have enough. 
uh, staying power, apparently, to be able to last. Hmm. That's actually uh, that's actually kind of sad. I, I really wanted to continue there. I was having a lot of fun, but apparently that is just not enough to um, to continue. Oh well, <laughs> never mind, never mind. At least we got a, a brief look at what it's like, and they do tend to give you a shield and a sword, which I actually quite like. I like that quite a bit. So maybe we'll be able to do another one of those in the near future. Ah, oh, oh yes, this is exactly what I was looking for. Fantastic. This guy's going to give me so much cash. You just wait and see. Look at this. So much cash. Come on. Come to me. Come to me right now. Look at this. Boom. All right. Uh, um, mm, okay. Apparently it's not as much as I actually thought. But it's still going to be a decent amount. 21 prisoners. And boom. Almost 8,000. Almost 8,000 gold right there. I'm now at 13,700. I might even be able to get another caravan up and running if we are lucky. Does this guy have any trade skill? I'm actually wanting to look for someone with trade skill already. But it seems like these guys don't actually have trade skill, unfortunately. So that's not really that good, unfortunately. But, ah, oh well, never mind. We do have some people from this faction here. And I'm actually wondering what they level up into. Let's take a look. These guys? Okay. So they level up into these fellows. They have about the same bow skill as Palatine Guards, which is actually quite nice. And then these guys are throwing weapon specialists. These fellows are pole arms, and these fellows are one-handed. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Although these fellows have massive pole arm skill, as you can see right there. Yeah, they have much more pole arm skill than these guys, but these fellows are more for spear, uh, spear walls and, and, and things like that because they have 90 athletics in comparison to these fellows who have 160. So yeah, these, these are for a much more mobile force right there, but they have no cavalry. That's very interesting, in my opinion at least. All right, cool, cool. And uh, should, I, should, should I do the tournament? Should I do the tournament here? Yeah, the prize is the same exact pole arm. Uh, am I cursed? I might be cursed now. And oh yeah, they've given me a bow. Okay, they are just really making a mockery of me now, aren't they? Yes. I'm not going to be able to do anything here. Two, two damage headshot. Okay, question. Why was I able to do two damage with a headshot, but then 34 damage to his shoulder? I have no idea. Maybe I released the, uh, released the button at the best time, or unleashed the arrow at the best time, or something along those lines. I have no clue, but okay. Happy with that, I guess, because we were able to get through to the next round, and... I'm a, oh no, I'm worried about this guy. Oh no, that was nice. That was fantastic. Alright, I just need one more point until we get to 75. One-handed. Oh, this guy's... Oh, this guy's a vassal. I just realized. Or he's a companion or something along those lines. But I think he's a vassal because he seems to have really good armor on. He can't be a companion, surely. We got him, we got him. And I got my one-handed skill at 75. That's fantastic. I can't. I still can't believe that my athletics is still 32. It's absolutely awful. Oh, and we're actually up against that guy once again. Okay, I can't believe that. 
Uh, thankfully they didn't give me something awful like a bow or thrown weapons or even a spear at this point. I'm basically just really crossing my fingers for these kinds of weapon duels. going for the shield bash but that was a bit too overconfident I think Oh, we got him. <laughs> now that was stylish if ever I saw it. Oh, yes. Very nice. Okay, we've redeemed ourselves up until this point. And now it is just a case of dealing with that fellow that we actually got a pretty decent amount of hits on with overheads. So I'm going to go for the same kind of thing. Blood splatter all over the battlefield. Oh, we got him. Whew. All right, that was not as difficult as actually defeating Oros or any of those other guys, but that was still pretty harsh. And we did get a wonderful pole arm right there, but obviously we already have the same exact pole arm. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure why they gave me that. But anyway, thrusting damage is very low on this, and that's also partially the reason why I wanted to level up my smithing skill because I very badly wanted to see if I could make a better one you know if I could make a better couching lance then I would be very pleased about that as you can see look at the look at the uh, look at this these are these are pretty awful right I mean look at that it says 128 cutting damage but only 30 piercing damage it feels to me like they want you to use them like slashing weapons which is something that I don't particularly want at the moment. I actually would like to do uh, some couch lancing and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe I'll be able to do it by just getting a bunch of smithing skill and then just going from there. That's pretty much all I can really do. So let me actually just take a quick look here. Uh, tree, tree branch? Wasn't the tree branch really, really good? I'm not entirely sure actually. Uh, it doesn't really matter either way what I select here, actually. Let's just select this one. And I'm just going to do this for skill. I don't think this is really going to get me that much. But I'm just going to do this for skill. It's going to get me 8, 7, 5. That's pretty good. And then we're out of wood at the moment. Okay, so we're now up at 80 smithing. And I'm, I'm going to, in a minute, just take a quick look and see... If I can actually get something from that, if I can actually make a pole arm that is somewhat decent, then I'll be I'll be quite happy about that. But it very much depends. We'll see if there's uh, anything there that could be quite useful. Let's sell all of my armaments. And don't I have the ability? Oh, I do have the ability to get another person. I'm going to get this guy because I think he has some pretty decent stats. And now we need to outfit him in some stuff, don't we? So let's go to the trade screen right here. And we're just going to get him some relatively cheap stuff. But decent, you know, decent stuff. So let's have a look. Um, 
Uh, yeah, this is this is a bit too expensive for my liking. Okay, what about something like this? These things. Yeah, this is pretty good. Let's give him that. Uh, wow, that's a really nice helmet. What? 58? Is that better than what I'm wearing? That's better than what Nathanos is wearing. No, I'm wearing something very good. Okay, I'm actually going to give this to Nathanos. And <laughs> it hides his face as well. I'm sure he's not very pleased about that. Okay, what? This is 1500 Are you serious? That's so incredibly cheap. Wow. Yeah, this is really, really cheap. Okay, uh, I'm going to give that to Nathanos too. Boom. Wow, we're going on a bit of a spending spree for Nathanos right here. But this does give a chance for his hand-me-downs to go to our next little friend over here. So I guess that's all right, right? Isn't it? Isn't that okay? I guess. Let's just give him that. And um, we'll give him a horse. Does he does he actually have good horse skill? No, he doesn't have good horse skill, but he has huge bow skill actually. So let's let's give him uh, let's give him some really really cool bows, right? Uh, let's have a look. Armor piercing arrows. Let's give him some of those. We're spending way too much money on this guy. And do I have a better bow than the simple short bow? No, apparently the simple short bow is all I can get him, and it's going to cost me 2500 which is absolutely awful. Okay, you know what? Considering I've actually spent a lot of money right here, I'm just going to sell a bunch of these javelins. I know, I know. I'm not going to do that all the time, just for this one episode. Trust me, it's all good. That's all we're going to do. And now I'm going to speak to this guy, and we're going to ask him, wish to form a caravan. Yes, this guy. There we go. All right, so he's going to go off and do whatever he does best. And do I have anything? No, I don't have any tasks or anything like that to do. But I think that's actually going to be it for this episode. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.